Hi, and welcome to Jankin Scott on Risk, the YouTube channel dedicated to the theory and practice of risk management. In this video, we're going to revisit the concept of the black swan and try to understand why they are so hard to manage. Uh, and for more on corporate strategies for dealing with black swan, please consult my book, Empower Enterprise Risk Management, co-authored with Peter Kapstadt. There's also more information on my webpage, riskbudgeting.se, and as they say here on YouTube, please like and subscribe. All right, so here it is, the black swan. For, for a long, long time, it was known uh, that uh, all swans were white. That was uh, taken for granted uh, until they eventually discovered the black variety in Australia, catching everyone at the time by, by a great surprise. So that's the metaphor used by um, Taleb in his classic work, The Black Swan, The Impact of the Highly Improbable in which he raises some of the bigger questions, like what's the nature of our knowledge of things and what, what are the limitations of that knowledge? And what's the nature of the randomness in this world? What kind of uncertainty are we dealing with? And um, it's an absolute must read for any risk manager, I would say. Uh, let's revisit, revisit uh, the definition of a black swan according to Talon. Number one is that they are highly improbable. Before, before the event, we're attaching a, you know, a very low probability if we consider it possible at all. So it's uh, supremely unlikely um, before it happens. It has an extreme impact. So it's one of those uh, things that, that can change the entire path of uh, the world we live in. Um, according to Talib, black swans are what drive world history even. But they tend to be very impactful and essentially put us on a new path and change the rules of the game. Um, the third characteristic is that they are perfectly explainable after the fact. Looking back, we can connect the dots and we go, yeah, for sure, that had to happen. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an impeccable logic now that that's, you know. So it seems to make perfect sense, but that's after the fact, right? Um, so those would be the three characteristics of a black swan. Uh, some examples here then, you have the rise of the internet. Who would have guessed that before, before it sort of um, became a big thing? Um, the fall of communism for a long time, people were worried about the Soviet economy surpassing the rest of the world and, and uh, outcompeting the Western uh, economies. Then it just crumbled. The 9-11 terror attacks certainly uh, seemed to come out of nowhere uh, and led to some major shifts in, in how we approach things like the whole security apparatus uh, in airports, etc. really changed things big time. Um, more recently, the pandemic, um, Taleb has argued that this is not a black swan on, on, because it's been, there's, there have been films made about black, uh, pandemics, for example. So how could it be a black swan then? Well, for most, for most of us, it was in a black swan in the sense that uh, we never expected to see such a thing in our lifetime. And maybe making films about it makes it seem even more surreal, like uh, <laughs> equivalent to the, uh, you know, Bruce Willis being outer space, drilling a hole in meteorites to save the world, that sort of thing. So, um, for all intents and purposes, that, that would be a, another black swan, right? So what we are dealing with then is a, a wild kind of uncertainty. Um, and there are just these major shifts and non-linearities and the complexity is overwhelming. The system consists of too many variables and too much complexity for us to ever grasp all the mechanisms and predict outcomes successfully. So that leaves known odds, you know, uh, pretty much uh, out of the question. And like when you roll a die, you, you know the, uh, if it's fair die, you know the probability distribution, the odds are known, but that's a very stylized situation, right? And it doesn't carry over into the real world. So we can forget about that <laughs> as Talib uh, might've put it. Um, so uh, an important thing to, to see is that these uh, black swans are relative expectations and knowledge. I mean, if you, if you have insider knowledge or you're wise and clever enough to see it coming, well, you're kind of uh, 
is to you, it's not a uh, black swan necessarily. Um, so the group involved in, in the 9-11 attacks, to them, it was obviously not a low probability event. It was, they were planning for it. Uh, preppers, they take pandemics very seriously and they do everything necessary to prepare for it. So to them, you know, that was perfectly expected and therefore not a black swan. Um, so it's a sucker's game, uh, meaning that if you are, uh, Ign remain ignorant and, and refuse to, to entertain these possibilities, well, then you're, that makes you a sucker and you're in for some major surprises. So black swans are a sucker's game in that sense. And um, the reason then to come back to the question we posed, uh, why are they so hard to manage? Well, that's because we find them very hard to imagine in the first place. How can you manage and prepare for, some, for something when you hardly grant it uh, any sort of um, probability um, of happening. So that would be uh, on a basic level, the, the explanation, right? So we're to, to varying degrees, we're all suckers here because the world, the, the system is too complex to, to predict. We keep running into these, um, these uh, surprises and shifts of, of the, the whole trajectory. And uh, that seems to be, <laughs> the name of the game. We, we, we just can't muster the wisdom and knowledge to um, anticipate these things. And, and uh, sometimes uh, we're not even trying. So, it, and that makes us even more prone to have these black swans or, or be t taken, um, taken by surprise by them because we love simple but coherent narratives. Like tell us a simple story that we understand and it has this nice <laughs> consistency, all, everything hangs together. That's what we crave. Um, so we're always creating that for ourselves. We, we invent these narratives to make, you know, connect all the necessary dots. And um, so that's a sucker mechanism. We, we oversimplify things because we prefer it that way. That's how we, the human mind kind of operates. Um, so that, yeah, that sets us up for, for black swans and it's hard to come around. It's um, part of uh, the human predicament in a way. Uh, of course, then some black swan thinking where, whereby you are imaginative and open-minded and play around with these possibilities and, and scenarios, that could certainly help. That would take the edge out of some of these uh, major uh, events, right? That uh, you at least entertain the possibility the problem, uh, as far as risk management in companies are concerned, is concerned, um, is that um, it's not well received. Uh, people don't really appreciate you coming around to uh, paint some dark picture of, of uh, possible, uh, you know, worst case scenarios. So, so what, what you're more likely to deal with is, uh, you know, people. Many people are on autopilot. It seems, you know, they go about their jobs, do what they have to do, and they just uh, can't wait to get home. So they don't want to be bothered by something that uh, seems more complex and takes them out of that comfort zone. We also have a, you know, we we fancy these uh, spreadsheets where everything seems so exact and precise, and you can line up your budget, and and everything seems to match. Well. <laughs> goes without saying almost that that's not preparing you exactly for, for a black swan uh, world. Uh, there's also this sense of wanting to keep things simple that that's, um, you know, uh, not really uh, well appreciated if, if you're going to challenge people and, and take them, you know, into territory where they uh, have less experience and they can't use their old rules of thumb and they will react with some hostility to, to these um, attempts to bring uh, the possibility of black swans on, onto the agenda. So the, the, the odds are stacked against you here that you're going to be, uh, that the black swan idea is going to resonate with people in the organization because they just want to go on with their business. Don't come around here with uh, <laughs> these uh, scary stories. Um, so uh, another complicating factor is that these, um, budgets and KPIs and bonus programs, et cetera, they play heavily into this because they distract us away from black swan thinking. We become short-sighted. We, we're trying to, we're going for some targets in the, in the, in the short term. Right? We have a, maybe a next quarter, next year, some target we're desperate to, 
to reach. So we strive for that and that keeps us busy. That's where our, our mind is at. Um, so for that very reason, you can have the so-called under management of risk problem, whereby people are basically disinclined to accept costs and, and efforts related to proactive risk management, because it's more convenient to just hope for the best, you know, put your hand, head in, 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 in the sand and, uh, you know, pray, pray that uh, some, some, um, some of the better scenarios will play out instead. And um, because if you accept these expenses that come with the proactive risk mitigation, that could make it harder to reach your target. If you have a profitability target, you're not likely to welcome these uh, costs up front, you know, uh, for which create the benefit of addressing some possibility that is a low probability and possibly far out in the future. So, so why not gamble instead that all goes well? So you get some uh, unattended risks there that, that could potentially wreck the company. Anyway, according to Talib, then risk management is uh, liable to make things work in a lot of cases, especially these uh, academic uh, platonic uh, attempts at modeling risk using silly assumptions. Uh, the bell curve is a, is, a, is a favorite example of Talib here, where you, many times you, you make these simplifying assumptions just in order to be able to solve your model. So it takes a number of simplifying assumptions to even to be able to derive your solution. Um, but then when it, you have the model, it's elegant, it seems to work and it's all, all wonderful. But, and you forget about the assumptions that you made in the first place to, to get there. So you start to believe in the model and it becomes sort of the truth and all the exactness and preciseness and the sophistication, you know, all that feeds hubris. And pretty much closes the mind to black swan thinking because you, you have it all covered. But the model is only the known risks. Uh, you, you, all the unknown <laughs> risks uh, by definition fall outside the model. And, and that's where the, the black swans is await, right? So, um, so th this is a very enjoyable part of uh, Taleb's uh, book where, when he pokes fun at these academics uh, <laughs> who believe in their own uh, masterpieces and, and end up creating lots of uh, problems for themselves and, and the world economy. So um, at least when they try to do business using these models, that's um, I think what he's trying to say. So the model only describes known unknowns, the, the risk that we're able to model, but Black Swan has to do with these, <laughs> the wild uncertainty that we often fail to uh, appreciate, right? So yeah, well, forget about all that uh, too, you know, we, we, they don't help us. Um, they make us more fragile, whereas we want to become anti-fragile. Well, what if you could take all this wild uncertainty and make it, make it sort of yours, make it work for you, not against you? Um, it can be hard, of course, obviously, but, but the general idea of anti-fragility is to love volatility and improve from it and gain from it. Like a, 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 an option, a stock option, for example, they gain increase in value from volatility. So they are anti-fragile in that sense, you know, that the more volatility there is, you know, the value goes up. So it's not just robust or resilient, it gains from from uh, more uncertainty. So um, that's something we can try to heed and, and as best we can. Um, so what we want then are not mathematical modeling with a great number of decimals, uh, rather you want generic strategies that help you cope with wild uncertainty. So as to become not only resilient, but anti-fragile. So the, the idea would be to not guess what the next black swan is going to be, assume that there will be one and prepare for all the eventualities or, or you know, some of them at least. And, and um, so, uh, yeah, you, you go for whatever strategy that on a general level helps you deal with uh, some of these disruptions. So like having a cash buffer, for example, or a strong balance sheet, or you're very cost efficient always so that, you know, there's some slack there. You try to create some flexibility where possible, uh, flexibility to change your position or exit certain uh, un undesired um, costs or whatever. These are generic strategies for, for 
dealing with any shock to the system, right? So that's where we should be should be at to you know be able to manage some to some degree these uh, black swans and um, so shift attention away from uh, forecasting and, and bell curve assumptions to that you know um, going for anti fragility. Very nice. We're um, it's time to draw some conclusions. So. Um, address the, the question we started out with, black swans are by definition hard to manage because they lie outside the realm of expectations. So it's hard to manage something that you fail to even, <laughs> you know, uh, grant the possibility of. So, and especially in organizations, you know, um, we, we are biased against this because we prefer these very simple stories uh, that, that have this coherency and, and we're more than anything going for short-term goals. So we're too distracted to, to uh, think about these ones. And we need to watch out for certain kinds of uh, overconfidence, right? And, and uh, especially in, in mathematical models and the likes, uh, that amplifies the sucker's problems. It leaves you ill-prepared for the, these, the wild uncertainty that one day will um, come along. So yeah, those would be the some conclusions for now. Uh, please read more in my books, uh, respecting.tc, more information there. Please like and subscribe and have a good day.